Welcome, dear FMD friends. Uh, this is Dr. Rajiv Dhawan, your ENT faculty with Dr. Tutorials, and I have got esteemed privilege of having Dr. Khalil, our radiology faculty, and Dr. Azam sir, our anatomy faculty, with us. And the session, our attempt to be part of your journey of FMG examination till the last minute is over, as you always plan to do in the Dr. Tutorials. So, welcome, sir. Welcome, Azam sir. Welcome, Khalil sir. Thank, Thank you, sir. you so much, sir. And, so uh, it's, uh, it's nice that, you know, you're joining us uh, at this moment and uh, being with the students till the last. And I think this has been an extended uh, exam for the students also. And uh, throughout, you know, we have conducted GTs and uh, everything. And the students have gone through a lot of work. I feel they are well prepared at this time. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Adam, sir, an opening comment from your side. Absolutely. I think uh, uh, the students have done a very, uh, very much hard work in the last few days and last uh, few months, I should say. And yes, of course, that hard work is going to pay off. <clears throat> Absolutely. Wonderful. I'm confident about them. Uh, so Khalil, sir, what is your mindset at this point of time, if you would have been an FMD examining? I think, sir, you know, no matter how much time we get, another six months or another one year, we'll never feel that sense of completion, that exams are like that. And, uh, you know, we want everything to be ready. I have written so many exams during our, you know, post-graduation and, you know, MD entrance exams and uh, post-MD also. We've never been uh, that satisfaction feeling that, okay, I have done and I'll go and crack the exam. So it will always be that sense of incompleteness that will be there. In that incomplete sense of, you know, preparation only, we'll have to go through with that mindset. It is never going to be complete, but still whatever we have learned, whatever we have, you know, accumulated over these months will definitely help us on the day of exam. Ex feeling of support, it's going to be a mental strength now at this point of time. And, uh, you know, I remember we, and even at the entering of the examination, till the examination uh, paper was opening up on the computer, I, there was never that feeling that, you know, I have prepared well. But once the questions start coming on the computer, once you start solving them, there is so much ease and, you know, you feel that you were uh, worrying unnecessarily. So that uh, feeling will always be there. And uh, it's all about that mindset that you balance that pressure and the stress and manage to, you know, go through, th sail through that uh, last few days and uh, give a good attempt and a whole hearted attempt, sir. Perfect, sir. And uh, if I can summarize it in one sentence, but sir said that, you know, in this feeling of imperfect preparation lies the perfect path to success. Absolutely. So provided we keep the hope alive and uh, for that, uh, you know, keeping the hope alive and keeping the whole sustained, we all are here to help you out over there. So Adam, sir, uh, one question to you, you know, the peak of the show is the evening prior to the examination. So what are your tips to the students so that they can keep their calm intact? Sir, uh, it's very simple. Like one day before the exam, I should say one thing, just keep it in your mind. All my dear FMGs that it's not about the preparation a day before. It's all about your mental making up for the exam. So your mental makeup for the exam. So it's not about the preparation. Don't think about the preparation at that point of time, like preparing a particular topic or something. And yes, of course, as our, uh, the very famous, very loving Rajiv Dhawan sir always says, make some magenta eye lines. So whatever you have marked with a different magenta color in your books, that is the thing that you have to look at the last day. And you have to look for those, all those tables, like memorizing ones where you have to remember like numbers and you have to remember that staging and all those things. And last day, you have to look at the images. So that is the only day. Don't keep anything for the last day. Okay, I'm going to, you know, blast out something with some topics or some subject. No, never. And it's all about the mental makeup. And here, sir, I would like to add one thing, sir, like most of the students, what they're asking, whatever I'm getting, uh, you know, uh, inquiries on uh, WhatsApp and all, students are more worried, okay, sir, when I'm just sitting ideally and thinking, am I able to recall complete anatomy? Am I able to complete uh, like radiology? My dear friends, I'll tell you one thing, even being a faculty, I think the other panel members along with me, Khalil sir and Rajiv sir will also agree with me that even as a faculty, if I sit all alone now and if I just recall in my mind, ki yaar, mujhe pura anatomy aata hai kya? so even I will be like panicking now, even as a faculty, I'm telling you. So my dear friends, my answer to that, that particular question is don't sit and think okay, out of all the 19 subjects, are you able to recall? Remember, it is somehow there in your mind. You have done a lot of hard work from the last six months. The moment the question will come, it will strike in your mind. I'm sure about that one. For example, if now also, if I ask you, like at what level you have the esophageal opening in the diaphragm, suddenly the table will come in your mind. Oh, voice of America. Understanding the point. So that's what I'm telling. Any question from any subject will particularly strike your mind. Why? Because I trust you people a lot. Whatever six months you have worked hard, I believe my students that yes, they can at least perform 50% here. 
out of 300 they are just asking for 150 understanding so last day it's all about mental makeup don't bring all these negativities in your mind just look at all your magenta highlights. Just look at the memorizing points. Just look at the image-based questions. And yes, in the evening time, there is a point where you have to just stop thinking about the studies, close your books, just relax. And just a night before the exam, just relax yourself. Okay. And have a nice, you know, decent food. Don't go for some heavy food or something like that. And just relax your mind, make up your mind for the exam and be ready for the exam guys. Is it okay? And one more thing I'd like to tell you here, the students in FMG, they're always like, you know, uh, jumping by looking at others. Or you are, wo, wo raat ko teen tak pad rahi hai. please, please let other people do whatever. You have the trust on yourself and don't jump by looking at others. Hindi mein kahawat hai, agar gorilla ko dekh kar haati kudega na, uska pair tuut jayega bhai. To dousra ko mat deko, apne ko jo karna hai, wo karo. Thik hai? So just be calm. It's not about studies. Just follow my one word. It's not about studies on the last day. Just recall all the memorizing points and that you have marked new books. Okay? That's my advice for the one day before, guys. Yes, sir. Wonderful, Adam, sir. And... Um... To just summarize it, I would say that Sir has beautifully explained that, you know, the last day is about developing the mindset and let's develop the mindset of a warrior. And when I say warrior, warrior doesn't mean that you have all the strengths on the planet available. A good warrior is who knows his weaknesses also, but still he knows how to play the game well in spite of all those weaknesses. So, so as Khalil Sir summarized that there's no sense of completion, agreed. So we are warriors with our own weaknesses, but we know how to play the game well on the exam day. And that's what Adam Sir is pointing out. Let's develop that mindset now that come what may, I'm going to play my game the best tomorrow. So that's the wonderful thing. And one more thing to add upon, you know, Adam Sir, before you close your day, maybe by midnight or something, please close your hands and pray for yourself and your for friends also. This is the most beautiful exam in the medical you know, history in the in the country where there's no competition with anyone. So guys, you can pass and your friends can pass. And what can be the beautiful, you know, more beautiful way than ending the day with the prayer for yourself, for your fellow beings also, may everyone pass the examination. And next day we get up with the, that same prayer one more time in our heart when we ask Khalil sir that what is his recommendation? How should you plan your morning before the examination? Khalil sir. Yes, sir. So what I have seen is, you know, the students have this tendency to study till late. Even, you know, we tell them to change their biological clock and all. It usually doesn't happen. And they are keeping on trying to cram a lot of things one day before, which is not needed and which is overwhelming to them. So you look that we will study at night and complete hoga. But uh, strongly suggest them to see that, you know, not to overwhelm themselves and just look at some previous year questions in the day before and just uh, try to, you know, finish off the day. The exams are not testing how much you can accumulate, that they are testing what you have gathered with the kind of concepts that you have covered over the, you know, preparation journey. So it is unnecessary, not useful, and, you know, will only give you a cloudy mind in the morning. So see that you have a sound sleep. And uh, as the exam is uh, asking you to report at seven o'clock, the exam starts at 10 o'clock. You have to report at seven o'clock. So you should be understanding that you have to wake up and these centers are usually towards the outskirts of the city. So you have to see that you plan your travel, you see the journey that is required. And, uh, you know, morning, early morning, reach your centers on time. Don't be in a, you know, a very haphazard manner that you reach the centers plan that you have your hall tickets, you have the identification card that they have asked you, plan it one night before only. So don't search for the things in the day, on the day, on the morning. Do not skip breakfast. You remember when you are writing these exams, we have a tendency, we'll just take a tea and write, go into the examination hall. We don't feel like eating also, but at least whatever you're comfortable, maybe, you know, banana, chocolate, fill yourself, okay? So have some, you know, coffee along with it, but fill your stomach. You need glucose when you're working so actively in the morning. And uh, be on time. Don't rush through the you know uh, place, and do not discuss anything in the while you are traveling or in the exam centers. I see students keep on you know discussing questions and looking into it. Don't panic. The exam does not test all of that at that point of mo moment. And uh, also during the exam, it's very important that you once you enter very peacefully, that gives you a lot of scope to be relaxed and you know work through the new environment. So if you go with a panicky, panicky mode and, you know, you're entering very late, that panic, you know, will carry on into your exam center also. So see that you are very calm and placed and smile, right? Relax. It's all whatever you could have done, you have done. Now it is just leave, as sir said, just leave it to God. Whatever your efforts that you have done, you have done. Just give your best shot. Give it a very smiling way. It's an opportunity, right? To go to the next side. Nothing to worry about. Nothing to get scared about. And uh, if you have done, you know, all the uh, efforts that all the months, definitely you will have a good exam. 
And on the day of exam also, when you're writing the examination, uh, do not panic if there are some technical issues. I've seen students panicking just because they don't get the allotment right, or they are, you know, seeing that the computers are, you know, not in the right uh, place, the fan is not working, and they start getting anxious in the first paper at that point of time. So uh, see that you are all well planned and uh, don't skip the breakfast. Have a proper sleep. You may not get the sleep, but at least close your eyes. Rest for as much time as possible. And um, also, you know, a pre-planned early reach to the exam center will help. And also, sir, like, you know, I have seen students, even till the last, no matter how much we say, they are still talking in the uh, travel, in the uh, buses and in the exam centers and everything, right? Uh, and also when they are opening the examination hall, the kind of questions that they get, right? I've seen many students giving up just out of the paper one. They come and say, sir, you know, paper one was difficult. And, you know, they, they have a very negative talk and surround themselves with that hope that, you know, uh, not something good is happening because they don't know the right answers also. What do you think they should be, you know, approaching it, especially when they break after, uh, you know, the first paper? How do you think they should be approaching the paper as such and also during the break? <clears throat> So the break time between the two papers in FMG examination is actually the make or break time. So it's not the break time, it's the make or break time, I would say. Okay. So guys, you have two options. Number one, as Khalil sir said, that we have been to many centers in the break time and we see people, you know, start, you know, discussing the questions. And unfortunately, what happens is, for example, you have marked some question as answer A, but your fellow friend came and discussed and he said, no, the B is the right answer. It's a human tendency to consider other person as a better candidate than you, actually. We think that they are PhDs and we are just, you know, nothing, actually. He's also another student only. Don't worry about it. So there's, you know what, a game is played always with the well laid out rules and that's what I believe in. And I'm not really, you know, like a huge fan of the discipline, but certain places I would want discipline really plays off. And may I recommend you one simple rule of that. Number one, keep your mouth shut. Believe, believe me, just, you know, more energy you would consume and more energy will dissipate. You are draining yourself for the part two paper. And if you are repeating this paper, you'll be knowing it. If you've done any other paper, you'll be knowing it. In the part two of the paper, you feel a little sleepy. Have you seen that? Because we have a lot of wasted energy over there. So number one, keep your mouth shut. Whatever happened, happen. Keep your ears also shut. There are some chirpy sparrows in all groups, actually, who will hop on one segment of students, other third, fourth, fifth, and they will tell four or five different answers which people would not agree with or they will discuss, they will feel demotivated. And I request all those chirpy sparrows also to be stay quiet on that day. This is a beautiful exam, may everyone pass. Let's hold hands, let's help each other. And one of the way of helping each other is to keep our mouth and ears shut on that day. Number one thing you should come when you come out of the hall is, number one, eat something. Eat a sandwich, grab a coffee or a tea, whatever you have available over there. Don't eat chole bature on that day. Please, if you are from north or maybe not dosa, sambar and all that, no rice, please. Just a sandwich, some biscuits, some light food would be absolutely okay idea because we don't want you to feel too much drained by having a good meal. In the evening, you eat biryani. We don't have any problem with that. Okay, but in the break, please eat lighter. Moment you come out of the hall, eat something, drink a cup of coffee or tea, whatever you like. Go to the washroom, use the loo, and wash your face, ear, hands, and everything with water. And you know, water has got a wonderful tendency of giving a fresh start to the mind, actually. That's why, you know, in namaz also, we do wuzu. And there's a scientific rationale behind it because water makes you feel purer and fresh start is there in the mind. So with that thing, come back. And what to revise in paper one and paper two break is, my best bet on OBGY and surgery. And if you want to carry one book with you with some notes, some one-liner written, OBGY surgery, please go take there and just you know go to one thing will be at least be quiet. You'll not be talking. Even if you're not revising, at least an act to revise so that nobody, nobody comes and disturbs you. Just keep looking at surgery points or dining points. Again, fold the hands. You're, it's a time, it's a very short break. But it's a very short break. It looks like a long break to you, but actual time is very less. You know, if you're a first timer, you will be knowing that you know that you think that's a long time. No, it's a very small, short time. You know, come out and then you know, eat something, drink coffee, stay quiet, don't hear anything, don't say anything, read OBGY surgery notes quickly, whatever one liner or magenta island, whatever you want to go to the hall on time. And Dr. Khalil has said very useful thing, please understand in the morning or in the break. If you will avoid any undue hurried approach towards anything, it will keep you calm when you face the computer also on that day. So this is our take on the, you know, 
the break time sir, okay so now uh, yes, sir, yes. The manage uh, sir koi bhi likhenge to not all the questions would be there but you know they our students go with the mindset ke har question ko sahi karna hai what do you think you know agar koi naya question aa gaya out of the blue ent ka question radiology ka rare age <laughs> ya anatomy ka koi aisa rare uh, you know a landmark pooch diye what should be your uh, thought process in the time of examination sir yes sir absolutely after discussing the break time let's go to the real exam paper 1 and paper 2 in the break also sir i may add one more thing that god for it god for it paper 1 came tougher than the last time also maybe in the god's hand we we as faculty also pray that you get easy paper but in the whole only you know and we decide actually even if you score 60 marks out of paper 1 i have a humble question to all of you can you not score 19 in paper 2 and pass the paper i have one question to all of you right now i mean maybe you think paper 1 is very super tough biochemistry stuff or micro stuff or patho or pharma is tough i know it for everyone okay god forbid god forbid we score 60 65 can't we score you know 95 or 85 90 85 marks in the paper 2 and pass the paper please keep the hope alive and for that only dr khalil sir is saying that what to do in the paper you know during the exam is going on how to keep this hope alive within us i always tell everyone that 150 out of 300 without negative marking means that even if we do not know every second question of the paper we can still comfortably pass the exam why if 150 question you are marking a guess only a thoughtless guess a random guess may god bless you minimum you score 15 out of that out of 10 question if you mark every question c c c don't you think we will score even one question out of 10 are we that unlucky no we are lucky kids of god don't worry we always feel that you know we always look at the unfortunate part but the fortunate part is there is no negative marking so guys first rule of how to keep the you know hope alive within us is there is no negative mark in the paper paper says that you score 150 out of 300 it means that i can make this happen as dr khalil sir said that there is no sense of completion no problem koi baat nahi hai in this incomplete you know preparation only will create the perfect path to pass examination beta when you see a simple question of one liner you know the only abductor muscle of the vocal cord is posterior cricoretinoid please don't on that day mark lateral cricoretinoid my humble request to all of you because this is what you know question lying in front of you sometimes we get overconfident that has to be avoided underconfidence also not a good thing overconfidence also not a good thing overconfidence means oh abductor and without even thinking you mark mark the lat that's not good thing and we will not do that silly mistake how to avoid that start from the first letter of the question go to the last letter of the question to read all the four choices now think carefully and just posterior or lateral posterior mark it one more time random check now you're sure about the answer never change the answer again and again and again you know whenever you change the answers too many times it has gone 80% time wrong only but one time sure answer fine now second question statement based question but you have not done the exact question maybe somewhere but you have known the story little bit over there here and there it's a mix and match of radiology with surgery or maybe some biochemistry figures also given over there try to analyze as much as possible you know what whatever best answer comes to your mind maybe it's a metabolic acidosis or respiratory acidosis you mark that if you think that okay i still have doubt don't waste too much time on that now you flag it for you to come back later on but every question should be attempted in the first go itself okay. if you need that still there is scope of thinking beyond 1 minute don't waste time on that flag it for review will come back at the end of the paper and the third category of question are which are absolutely unknown question and i have laid out many example for you you know from teriyaki syndromes to you know what not and all that you know it you know it actually when you see any unknown question which you are absolutely having no idea cryptogenic gene gamma 123 is linked with all of the following disorder except a histiocytosis x eosinophilic granuloma hand shoulder cystin disease mirad gubler syndrome even you do not know what is cryptogenic gene what is gamma gamma 123 is very very remote thing out of four choices three you have not heard in your life ever why you are wasting time on them why is these are type c question and you know that when you see these type c you minimum 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 80 90 question we are going to find in this fall in this category unfortunately i am sorry to say that even the topper 235 scorer 
also gained 10 12 marks out of those guesses even he also scored 2 22 10 on his own knowledge only don't worry about that so 80 85 question even will fall to type c category don't worry look above i always say remember my face over there give a good smile and mark the most beautiful choice and this most beautiful choice has to be thoughtless choice is a random guess why guess has to be random your mother is praying your father is praying your friends are praying for you to pass the examination outside examination hall how their prayers will reach you how the grace will help you in these type c question only now why are you putting foot in the grace middle you don't put your foot in the grace let it be uninterrupted flow keep the hope alive the best thing is always always keep it mind. you will get a trail of question three four sequential question in psm sometime in biochemistry sometime in microbiology sometime in pharmacology you know it trail of three four question is going to demoralize you Sequential three, four question means one examiner has put a very difficult question. That is not your problem. That examiner's problem. Don't worry. One examiner chose a difficult set of question and put over there. Don't let that derail you. Remember, such trails will come two or three times in the paper one or two or three times in the paper two also. Remember my face, Dr. Khalil's face, Azam sir's face, that these three guys told us something they're going to happen like that. But we will not let the hope of passing die within us. Will be a warrior. Will be fighting till the last second exam is over, and that's the only way. And that's the way our seniors also passed last time, sir. I could not pass. I'm a repeater. First time, second time, third time. Every time is a different time. But life is like that. This time I'll make it happen. But my approach toward exam will be a positive approach, a hopeful approach. Okay. I'll ask the same question to you know Azam sir to contribute to this. You know, during the exam time, what they shall do. Absolutely, sir. I think uh, you have covered almost everything, like how the student should uh, really have his attitude and behavior during the exam. Absolutely, absolutely fine. Just have a belief in your uh, yourself. And uh, I just want to add one thing, sir. Like most of the students will be asking, sir, what do you have to take to the exam? What do you have to carry to the examination hall? Carry your confidence, guys. Just carry your confidence there. That is going to help you. And carry your confidence in such a way that you have done an enormous amount of hard work. Those All those long, long classes and after classes at library hours and all those. And that is going to surely pay it off. This, three, this, this type of questions that sir told you. So Raju Dhansar has nicely classified the questions into like the three categories and all. So those three categories of questions, yes. Just carry the confidence along with you. That is going to help you. Yes. Wonderful. Sir. That's uh, the, the best you know, component of the kit on, on the exam day is confidence and absolutely. And, you know, you know, all the, you know, everyone attached, like, you know, every faculty, you know, your parents, your, you know, sibling, your friends are having, you know, prayers in their heart for you and you're carrying the prayers with you. I am a strong, you know, believer in that things don't really happen on their own. There is a plan behind you, which is actually making things happen. So submit yourself to the plan with a lot of stability in your heart on that day. Khalil, sir, very precious word from your side. You have been into, you know, like FMG's lives in such a big way. I would like your pearls of wisdom for them for the exam session, paper one, paper two. What shall they do to make sure that they, you know, are the other side of 150? Yes, sir. I mean, uh, if you remember, sir, recently the NB has uh, given uh, guidelines also in that they clearly mentioned that 60% of the questions will be from main no topics. And this is where the result lies. 30% is good to know. 10% is main no questions. So they are going to be questions which that uh, going to, this is given by NB board and those kind of questions only will be in the exam. Try to search for those 60% must know questions which you should not miss. Don't worry about uh, those random questions that the examiner gives in. And uh, you know, as you're rightly saying, sir, it is important to be a warrior, fight till the 300th question, be a warrior, not a warrior. Do not enter the examination hall with a lot of worry, a lot of panic and stuff. Enter with a smile, enter taking it as an opportunity, taking it as, as a, you know, experience to, you know, enjoy and just go there and enjoy and express yourself, whatever you accumulated. Exams will keep coming. Don't attach too much of pressure to this, right? You just enjoy how the whole, you know, scenarios are coming, the clinical scenarios are coming and you will get, you will search for those 60% must know topics. And the fight is still the 300th question. It's all about your mental game now, right? Whatever the paper is, if it is difficult for you, it is difficult for most other people. So it is not just only difficult for you. So don't unnecessarily, you know, feel that something, the whole world is crashing on you. 
do not have that kind of negative attitude. If you are able to not do it, that's the most difficult question. That is not a question that everybody else is doing. You do what is the 60% must know topics and uh, you know, keep your calm. Do not discuss with your friends unnecessarily in the after. And you know, so a lot of you know times uh, they get influenced by what is happening in the lunch time, what students are saying, somebody are saying this came from that place, this came that avoid those discussions as sir said clearly keep yourself you know away from those uh, thoughts become mute uh, do not hear anything at that time and see that you focus your energies until the 300 question and i hope sir you know uh, getting the extended time and the kind of preparation that our guys have done we are sure that uh, they'll come out on the uh, successful side any last comments sir from your side uh, my, my dear friends, uh, uh, the last comment would be that if, if I would have been FMG examining and going on exam on 20th January, I would just go with this thought in my mind, which I always do, that I do what I did, now I will see what I will see. But I am going to play my best. In English, I would say that to myself, whatever I had to do, I have done it already. Whatever will happen, I will face it with a lot of you know, pride in my heart that I did my best in the preparation times. And though it's not the best preparation, I understand that. Don't worry. You need not to be perfect to call yourself. Oh, I, I, at least we tried our level best. You know what? There are certain patches in every preparatory cycle where you would not have performed the best of the, your abilities. Fine. Everybody does that. Still, you have really read a lot. I, I have a huge respect for every FMG that they have really read a lot in spite of the challenges of preponement and the postponement. And you know what all we have faced? Have the respect for yourself. Then... I will say whatever will happen after the result, I will also face that. But on the exam day, I'm going to play my game well with the hope in my mind, absolutely alive, with the prayer in my heart, always, always beeping within me to keep my mind absolutely you know, focused on the question so that I don't do silly mistakes. And I'm able to process the information better for that little tricky question over there. Okay, So I, I will conclude with one thing only from my side, that just a prayer from each and every faculty member of Dr. Doriel's and every faculty member of every institute, I would say, has only one wish that may FMGs meet us on the other side of 150 and start their life as a budding doctor in this country. So friends, in the end, I would request Dr. Khalil, sir, to you know, say the last you know, few words to you before we finish it. So guys, enter with confidence and courage. Be a warrior, not a warrior. We are looking for your success. We are all praying for your success and you will have a good exam. All the best from my side. Adam, sir. Yes, my dear friends, you have prepared well. I believe you people that you're going to rock in the exam. And yes, after the exam, I'm not, I'm not going to see you again in the mm -hmm. same classes. I want to see you on those big, big banners and you come out with flying colors and you have lots and lots of success in your life. All the best years, all the best from all the doctoral faculties and the entire team of doctoral. So thank you, panelists. Uh, and uh, uh, best wishes each and every FMD student uh, who is he listening to us and uh, as I uh, always believe in that every institute, every faculty member in doctorials and otherwise everywhere would be praying for your success and you just play your game well on that day. Don't have any burden on your head. Just as Khalil sir said, just look at the questions an opportunity for you to score one mark for that question and let's, you know, you will not know even when you have already gathered 115 marks over there. Best wishes everyone. <laughs>